did thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, we're going to just do a, sort of an introduction to the library, uh, online libraries, but directed for distance students. So I'm assuming that the three of you are uh, distance students. And if you are, if you could just let us know where you're coming in from tonight. Uh, great. Yes. Uh, excellent. Yeah, well, you know, if you live in Bridgewater, it'll definitely be helpful. I mean, if you're on campus, there's some things that are, you know, while you're here for your class, there's some things that will be easier to do. But, you know, given, you know, how tight everyone's time is, I imagine that a lot of uh, the time you're on campus, you do your class, and then you got to run to something else. So it's definitely uh, a plus um, to to be able to to have some of the distance services. And I know that uh, in the surveys that we do of distance students at the Mount, I think 80% are actually in the uh, the Halifax, the HRM. And it's mostly for uh, flexibility and convenience and time, you know, can be as much of a barrier as a physical different a distance. <laughs> yes. I can well imagine, yeah, the uh streets on Halifax uh can be confusing. And I see we have uh someone's just joined us. Hi Victoria. Um I was just saying that you know tonight's session is focused um, on uh, just the library services and resources that we have focused on distance students but of course it helps everyone who is coming in from off campus and who's got very limited time on when they're here on campus. Are you at a distance Victoria or are you in the HRM area? Still, uh, they're a little ways away from the, the mount, not as easy to get in, especially on wintry days. Yes. Great. So, I mean, tonight we're just going to look at um, the sort of the online journals and ebooks that we have and how to get access to them. And, of course, uh, we also purchase and subscribe to some specialized article database that are related to different mount programs. And I wonder if you all could just uh, uh, type in which programs you are, you are um, affiliated with at the mount. Great, so two business, public relations, and psych. Excellent. So um, I'll definitely show you the guides that um, that that have uh, the the extra tools and databases related to your areas. Um, the other thing that uh, we have are tools for helping manage that research and those citations once you do, you know, find articles that are or books that are relevant to your your research projects. And, you know, we're always here, um, you know, librarians, library staff, to help and assist you with your research. And I should say, how many of you are familiar with the, the Mount uh, Library and the, the library site? Or is this all sort of new for you?
Great, Joanna. Well, as we touch on the different aspects, um, feel free to ask questions. And, and we will have other workshops throughout the team that might be going into a bit more uh, depth than we might tonight. But definitely, when we are on the different uh, tools and resources, definitely ask questions, especially if you found that you've kind of hit into some uh, challenges when you've been there. Yes, definitely, and it changes constantly. I know we have uh, uh, a bit of a time making, keeping up, making sure that our uh, help pages are up to date and our videos are up to date. So, of course, if you ever encounter something that looks like an older interface, just let us know because things are changing all the time. Great. So, um, does everyone have a Mount ID card? Great, because that's uh, definitely a very useful tool when it, it comes to to uh, doing your your research. I mean, although you log in with your your Moodle or your sort of network address, the uh, barcode from your your ID is what's used for for um, ordering document delivery. So journal articles that we don't have, or ordering books from other um, um, other libraries. Yes, Victoria, I keep seeing like a little sort of lag symbol next to your name. So uh, rest assured that this session is being recorded. So if you're missing what we're saying, you can always uh, look at the recording afterwards. But I hope it clears up for you and that you're able to follow along. Um, I should uh, note again, because I was thinking of a session more focused to um, students who were outside of HRM or even outside of Nova Scotia, the, the books by mail is really just for students who are outside of Nova Scotia. Um, within Nova Scotia, we ask that if you order a book that's not at the Mount, that you pick it up either at the Mount Library or another uh, Nova Scotia University or college library. So for instance, um, when you're saying that you were from Bridgewater, you could pick it up at um, a community college in the area. Is there a community college in Bridgewater or is it uh, in Lunenburg? <laughs> That's what got me confused. I knew it was Lunenburg campus, but it's in Bridgewater. So yes, you can actually order monk books to be delivered to Bridgewater for you to pick up, as well as you can order books from St. FX, Cape Breton University, Acadia to be delivered to Bridgewater. And Janet, you can have it uh, delivered to the um, Akeley campus, so uh, the waterfront campus in uh, Dartmouth. So I mean, there there is some sort of ease, and you can return uh, the books there as well. If for some reason you need to travel um, out of uh, um, the province, you're going to New Brunswick, or you're traveling back to um, Prince Edward Island. You can ask for a card. Um, it's called a Cuba card. And that, along with your Mount card, you can borrow books from other university libraries in Canada. The one exception is University of Toronto that isn't part of that agreement. But that's just something that's kind of good to, to know if you, you are traveling outside of the province. Great. So I just want to kind of cover, you know, just on the home page, you know, of course, we've got um, NovaNet Discovery. And that's um, really a more general search. So that searches both books and articles. 
and the articles are coming from a selection of databases and other sources, but it's not all of our databases. So it's good to know that you're getting books and some articles that you might still be missing out on on some if you used this suit. So you don't want to rely 100% on this. Definitely want to start here. Good place to start and see what's out there. But there will be some additional places to search. And I'll be showing you those uh, um, uh, tonight. Yeah, so again, even though most people, I would say, use NovaNet by, by default. And again, excellent place to start because you're getting both the books and the journal articles but in, you're going to be missing out on some journal articles. And I'm just going to kind of run through a little, a few more tips about Novanet. Um, so you know, once you search, and I'm just thinking specifically here for the uh, journal articles, one, there's this, um, I should just draw a little circle by it. Um, this refine my results, and it'll say resource type. So if you click on articles, then it'll just give it'll just give you the um, the articles. Avoid if you're looking for articles. Avoid clicking on library because once you click on a library, that just narrows you down to to sort of um, print items in the library. And actually, the articles that that show up um, in the results are all the articles that the mount has access to. So there's um, if you're looking for articles, there's no need to refine by library. Um, you can also sort of uh, customize dates. So if you just want more recent stuff, you know, let's say last five years um, or so, you, you can do so. And in your area, you know, psychology, business, communication, I know that, that those fields really uh, depend a lot on uh, recent uh, um, publications. And of course, most professors are sort of interested in you seeing the peer review journal. So you can see that you can um, select that as, as well here, just to help you sort of, um, you know, you usually end up with so many results when you do a search that uh, some of these uh, sort of filters that they cite can just help narrow down some of the, uh, the, the amount of uh, results you're getting. Of course, uh, you know, as you click these little uh, facets or filters at the side, they'll show up at the top. So that uh, if you want to, you can just uh, you want to get rid of one. You go, okay, you know what? I don't want a particular subject area, or I don't want a particular date area. There's a little X, and you can just get rid of them to return to the uh, the, the larger search without those additional conditions. And I'm sure you've discovered by now that it, if you want to get to the full text, you click on Find Online. Sometimes when people are sort of new to the search, they click on Details, because they think that's where the full text will be. But it's the Find Online, and then you've got the links to do the, the full text. Uh, now, if for some reason um, it's, you know, you click the link and it's, you know, a broken link or it's not working, because that can happen too. Um, has that happened to any one of you where it looks like it, you should be able to get the journal article, but then it, it ends up not being available? Good, yeah, it doesn't happen often, but um, once in a while it can happen. I mean, if it's something you wanted to to, to get. One, it's always good to drop a library at msvu.ca a line just to let us know that something's not uh, working as it, it should because we can check it out, you know, contact the vendors or the people that we're getting that from to fix it. But in the meantime, you can also um, click on the document delivery to be able to uh, order the uh, the item from a different library. I'm just wondering how many of you have used document delivery? Great. So, and Joanna, you've been able to get all the items, okay?
Oh, okay. Great. Okay, it sounds like you guys are all pros already. <laughs> So when you're looking for books with Novanet, um, again, you can always zero in on the books by the um, Refine My Results. Um, you can also, especially if you're not able to come on campus or you're not, you know, you wanted to see what's available um, right away and you, you, you don't have time to order it to be um, brought to the uh, the college closest to you, as in the case of Dartmouth or Bridgewater. Uh, you could check to to see okay what's available online. You can see that there's an option to say show full text online. And then of course if you select books, and then this is one case where because it's books, you do want to sort of narrow it down to the amount and to, to Novanet. The, the publishers don't allow the libraries to share our ebooks. We can only have our own students um, view our ebooks. Um, and then Novanet, it's everyone contributes to Novanet. So Novanet is a, a sort of a shared ebook program. So you can um, click on more options to select both Mount St. Vincent and Novanet and then you'll get the ebooks that you have access to from home. Um, and then of course, you know, once those ebooks show up under the view online, you definitely just want to click on the um, check full text uh, um, for MSVU. Or on occasion, you'll see a, a link for check full text for the Novanet. Um, sometimes the book tries to load in this small little window, so there's always that link to open it up in its own screen. And just checking, how many of you have used the uh, the Mount Library eBooks? Great. Well, since that that is one that's a little bit new to you, let's just um, take a, a a little a few minutes and use the uh, Novanet search to to access the uh, the ebooks. And um, I'll also bring up one on my screen too. But I'll just give you like five minutes. And this is the the slide with the the um, steps there, so you could see. Um, you know, after you, you do your search, and just search for something in your area, you know, just a really broad search so that it'll be easy to uh, to bring up some books. Um, you want to click on the full text online, you know, make sure you're just looking for books. And then under library and more options, you want to select Novanet and Mark St. Vincent. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to put the timer for just uh, five uh, minutes, and then um, we'll meet back and see how it how it went. All right, you should see the little uh, clock with the time um, uh, going down, and it'll probably beep on your end once the uh, five minutes is is up. And in the meantime, I'm going to switch across to my uh, my search uh, browser as well.
great. So the uh, time you just went. Um, how did it go? Uh, was everybody able to find uh, an ebook? Actually, access the the uh, the ebook. Okay, I'm just going to um, pull up one on the screen um, right now. Yeah, so this one, the how learning works. You can see this is one where I always, you know, try to put it in the box, so I always open it in a new window. And uh, just some tips. I always choose to read online rather than the download. Uh, oh yeah, good point, Janet. You you always do have to um, log in with your your um, the same as your Moodle account. Uh, so I always choose to read online. The if you download one, you need to have a specific um, Adobe uh, digital editions to read the online because they, they have lots of uh, digital rights management that lock it down quite a bit. Um, whereas if you read online, you don't need the, that additional software. Also, once you download it, that digital rights management software means that you only have access to for it for one week. And once that week is over, it stays on your computer, but you can't open the file at all. And any notes that you might have made, um, you lose. Whereas uh, online, you always have access as long as you're at the mount. And um, let me, uh, you know, if you you do any um, highlighting, or you you know you add any um, notes, they're they're always there. So as as long as you're a a student, you have access to your notes, and um, they're there f for you. The only time I even consider uh, a download is if I'm going to be traveling and I'm um, going to be, I don't have um, internet access or easy Wi-Fi, and I don't want to use up a lot of, of data on a, on a cell phone. But uh, again, it's, it's quite handy, especially if you're not on campus and you're at a distance to to use the uh, the e-books. And I, I find that books continue to be a good way of sort of getting a general introduction. The general articles tend to go quite deep into specifics, but sometimes you just want that overview of a particular topic. And in that case, I find um, books are much better at that. Um, than uh, digital articles. Uh, yeah, so the printing, again, it depends on the, the different, we get these ebooks from our different vendors, so where the printing is and how much you're allowed to print depends. So the ProQuest ebook central, you can see up at the top here you've got um, the different options. So you can see that, um, Oh, so of course I have to, you do have to check out the ebook, and all of them say that, and that's um, fine to, to check it out. It just lets us know that the book is being used. Um, once you, you check it out, you can see that you can, um, you can download um, a particular chapter, um, and they always say how much you're allowed to, um, to download. And, so you get a maximum of, of um, 66 pages, and then you can put in the, the page range that you want. And then you get uh, just a regular PDF that you can save to your computer, and you can keep for as long as you want. Uh, now, I think that uh, those 66 pages limit is for a year. So, you know, you won't be able to, to copy more than, than that. Oops, and I can't that. Um, yeah, so that's sort of, I mean, that's the one drawback of the e-books is that um, they are pretty strict about how much you can, you can copy out of it. 
yeah, and again, the the um, printing is is pretty much the same deal. I mean, it's you can see the it looks almost the same, and it it still gives you that that same um, sort of limit. I'm just going to look at one of the other ones. Let's just see if. Uh, yeah, so you see, this is the. We also get them from um, EBSCO. Yeah, and again, you can see that. Uh, it's sort of the the same deal. Um, again, the page number will vary. It tends to be about ten percent of the whole book, um, but it's the it's more or less the same kind of idea. Great. So I'm just going to switch back to the slide one second. So excellent, and of course, as I mentioned, you know, when you're going back to the print books, and so not the not the e-books, because we can't borrow e-books from other libraries because of um, sort of the publisher's requirements. But for print books, you can borrow from other libraries, and you can have it delivered to the library closest to you, um, academic library, so college or university. Um, you can retain it at any library, so you can actually retain them at public libraries. Um, but you can use the document delivery to get the print books delivered to um, to closer to you. Of course, if you're ordering a journal article, it's sent to you by PDF by email. So now I, I mentioned that you know the November discovery doesn't have. Um, Every, not all the journal articles. You'll be able to get um, the more specific uh, resources and, and articles by going to the subject guides. And um, you know, once you click on on guides, then you get a, a longer list of resources. And then once you click on your subject area, then we have the guides that sort of give you the the um, databases that are most relevant um, to you, and of course, you know we've got like the business administration, and we've got for all the different subject areas. So, have any of you used the guides um, related to your subject area? Yeah, so here, yeah. and I mean the guides A to Z and the research guides. Because the guides A to Z is just a long alphabetical list, and it also has some of the other library services too. Um, this research guide is very close. We we sort of just it's the same information, just organized um, in a slightly different way that some people find more helpful to zero in on their items. Um, but you know. Whichever one you use, um, you know, it's more or less you're you're basically getting to the guide with the the areas. Now you can see we always put the um, the database that is sort of most relevant to your subject area up at the um, the top. And the the thing about these uh, databases is that they they tend to have um, Items that are relevant to your subject area. So, for instance, um, like the the business um, guides. You know, like if you do a a, a subject uh, like a name of a company, you can find that you in the source types also you you're getting access to like market research reports. I mean, in addition to your academic. Um, journal articles, but depending on the database, they're going to give you 
things that are specific to that subject area. So that's one thing. I know that you all said that you do some searching, but you may not feel that you're doing it more the most efficient way. I think finding out which database is sort of the the special one for your area is a, a way of becoming a more efficient uh, a researcher. And uh, and then just taking a look at the at the advanced screen and and seeing sort of what um, sort of special areas you have. So I'm, I'm just going to go back a second to psychology because I know we've got a, a psychology person here. So excuse the scroll as I go down. I know um, sometimes this can be vertigo inducing on the Blackboard Collaborate. So I apologize. So. Um, with the psychology database, you can see that uh, as I scroll down, you know, it lets you specialize on which population group you want and then the methodology. So if, for instance, um, your professor is saying, okay, I want, you know, empirical studies on motivation. I mean, you can select and say, okay, I just want the actual empirical research studies. Um, and again, you can see h how many options you have for fine-tuning your, your research. But I can then go back up to the top and, um, and do that search. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm getting exactly the those um, empirical studies on the topic of um, of motivation, and I can see here the subjects that uh, motivation is 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 um, being listed here. So I mean that's definitely one tip I would say is is uh, visit your your guides and take a look at the the top um, database that's listed. Uh, another place to find this is, again, from the uh, library homepage, the databases A to, to Zen. Um, we list more than databases here. We actually list all sorts of different types of uh, resources. Um, but you can also narrow down by subject. So I know we had somebody else from um, uh, public relations here. So I can go down to the um, public relations. And again, you can see that there are two, um, you know, sort of top guides. One thing to keep in mind though is, although these are the two top, most um, areas can be a bit multidisciplinary. So uh, it's worth looking at the other <laughs> databases too. But these top ones are probably going to be key to any um, search that you you do. And on this page too, you can see, okay, if you just want to see just your, your articles, then this will give you a list of all the uh, databases related to this subject area. So I wonder if you could, I'll just give you a few minutes, um, maybe just three minutes this time. Just um, go to the A to Z list and just take a look at the uh, databases, the article databases in your particular area. Again, just so you familiarize yourself with um, getting to the article databases this way and just um, type in the text box once you've done that or if you have any questions about how to get to this page.
Oh no, I was just uh, waiting to hear back from you for when you were able to uh, to get to the A to Z uh, database and just look at your your subject area. Oh, absolutely. That's a really good question, actually. Um, so the we subscribe to a lot of, of databases for you. The um, open there's a bit of um, a movement now because the the way um, subscriptions, you know, the uh, academic publishing works is the uh, professors and researchers at a lot of universities um, do their research. It's all funded uh, through the government of course, and through the universities. They then publish their works. It gets published into to journals. Those journals are then sold back to the universities. I should mention the professors don't get paid for the work that they publish because, of course, they're hired by professors by universities. So the the research that they're publishing are, are just seen as products of their their work as professors. The publishing companies then sell this work, you know, the journal articles and the databases back to the universities. So there's been uh, a feeling that one, it gets all this research that's being done that's actually being paid for by public funds is locked behind these subscriptions that uh, only universities can afford and the public um, isn't really, I mean they benefit like through the way it trickles down but they don't have direct access to the actual research that's being done with public money. So there's been a movement for open access which means that rather than paying a subscription, the actual research articles are available to to anyone. You don't have to have a Mount login to be able to get access to it. Um, so that's and there's very much a movement now and it's it's actually quite politicized as you could e imagine any time there's uh, money involved. So the other side of that though is that um, of course once you graduate you don't necessarily um, have access to these items anymore, although they could help with your professional development. So we've started to sort of um, mark a lot of these with the open access, um, sort of open lock, just so that uh, you can still come to the uh, this A to Z list and you can see that um, we differentiate between the ones that require uh, a login and the ones that um, that don't, and this would you know differ depending on the uh, um, the the different areas. So let's say if we went to um, let's say education, you can see that there are a couple more that uh, don't require a login. So yeah, so that's a little bit about the open access um, icon on um, these resources. Any other questions around that? Great, so I'm sure all of you already have your, your logins. Um, yeah, so just a little note uh, um, about the, the databases. Of course, you can see that um, you always want to think of your, your main topics. They don't work well when you just type in a long string. Uh, when you're typing a long string of words, they tend to um, look for each of those words within five words of each other. So you can see how that can really throw off a search. Um, you want to add each main concept on a new line. And uh, of course the scholarly peer review is uh, um, usually what most professors are, are looking for. And then of course you can um, specify more recent information if you want that or if you need that. 
and you can see here just an example of, of breaking down that. I'm just curious, do you tend to break down into the main um, topics or do you tend just to type in a, a longer phrase or, or sentence um, in the search boxes? Yeah, so John, I think that's one thing, uh, just a tip that you can try practicing is is do the uh, the keywords and, and break it down in the main concepts. You'll probably see a really big um, difference in the type of results that you're getting. And then just like in uh, uh, Novanet Discovery, you've got your, your filtering options um, at the side as well that can be pretty helpful. Once you get into the um, the sort of detail. So, you know, once you get the results, you just click on the title and that will bring up the details. You know, basically the keyword searching, it's just looking for the words in different places in the abstract, in the title. So that's why when you do the long line, it's looking for all those words close together. And you will get some results. You'll just not get um, as many or it won't be as effective if you just use the keywords. Um, and then, of course, you've got your, to get the full text, you want to click on the check for full text. Um, of course, once you click on the check for full text, if we have that, if we have a subscription, it'll show up here. It's usually a couple of a clicks, like you click and then it takes you to that record and then you've got to, you know, click again on the full text to actually get to the full text. So sometimes it can take three or four clicks. And um, I've spoken with students who said they couldn't get the article. And then I asked them to show me the steps. And they were almost there. They just needed to do one more click. So um, persistence really pays off in, in tracking down that, uh, that full text. Of course, if we don't have the full text, the message will just say request item via document delivery. And again, that's, um, you know, the, the form, which, of course, you want to use the barcode from your ID card. So it's not the same as the, the Moodle login or the database login. You want to use the 14-digit uh, barcode from your ID um, to be able to, to make the order. I mean, fortunately, it just fills it all in for you. And you just need to um, check off the little um, box at the bottom to be able to hit the submit. And I always tell people, you know, just check to make sure that we've got the right email address um, for you. And um, then, you know, you'll be able to do it. And of course, if it's a book that you're ordering, you, you can pick it up at a, another university library. Um, if you just wanted to order a book, it, you know, there's a book that you really need or a journal article you really need, but you haven't been able to find it in the databases, on the home page under library services, there's actually a link to document delivery. And then there you can get that empty form just to fill it in from, from blank. I mean, most people use the document delivery from things they're finding in the databases or through NovaNet, but it's good to know that, that this is available for you too. And of course, the other thing is the, the citing and just managing um, your, your results. Um, how many of you use uh, RefWorks? Or have you even heard of RefWorks? Yeah, we have a, a session that's going to look at a bit more in depth at it. I think it's either next week or the uh, week after. Um, and that's that's definitely um, worth it. It just helps you while you're doing your research. You can um, just, and so I should just back up a second. You get it under library services. If you click on um, RefWorks, 
then there's a, a link to um, to create um, your RefWorks. And while you're searching in um, the databases or in Novanet Discovery, there's actually a link that you can use just to send across the citation. So while you're researching, it's keeping track of what you're using for your your um, articles. And then there's a little plugin that you can add to Microsoft Word so that when you're writing your papers, it will actually um, insert the citations you know, where you tell it to. And then you just click a button and it um, creates the bibliography for you. So again, if you haven't used it as yet, um, I encourage you to come to the workshop that we're doing in a couple of weeks on it. Yeah, it, it takes a little time to learn it and to kind of get used to it, but it is so helpful. And again, if the, um, the session is not a time that's convenient to, to you, just email me and I'll, um, we can set up uh, a time. I would say if you are on campus, um, it's a good one to bring in your, your, um, your laptop and we can take a look at it together. Um, if you're not on campus, we can also just um, meet the way we have tonight and I can um, take it to you. But that, you know, RefWorks, to do it justice, needs its own hour to, to take a look at it and really um, see how it works. But again, it's an online tool, easy to use um, and, and very helpful both in keeping track of what you're researching and keeping track of what was good for your research and with actually doing the APA or, or MLA um, citations. And of course, I mean, RefWorks, um, even though it does it for you, you still need to check it. So we also have an APA um, guide where we have examples of of what the citations look like so that you have something to compare and something to make sure that you're, you're on the right track. Um, have you, have any of you used our APA guide? Yeah, I'll just, go, I'll just do a quick little uh, show of it. So on the page again, it's just under library services. And if you click on the citing APA, MLA and more, this takes you. This is actually the same page that has the rough boxes up above. But if we click on it, you can see that, um, one, we've got little blurbs that just kind of give you some examples of the what you should be putting in the text, you know, um, what it should look like. And then for the bibliography at the end of the paper, we've, um, you know, got examples of what it... Uh, what it should look like. And we have both the examples of what it is in the paper and then the examples of what it should look like in the um, in the reference list. So, the, you know, this, and we have like examples for like videos, for government documents, for the website so that you can compare and make sure that it's, it's the right, um, the right fit. And, you know, just in terms of the general um, information, we also just kind of give you a heads up on what are sort of common errors. And this is especially good if you're using RefWorks. These are the things that you should look for if you wanted to, to check. And just up at the top, just on the, the main page, uh, what I really like this, uh, well, one, that we have a little video just to give you a little overview if you need an APA refresher. And we have a link to uh, Purdue Oil, Owl, I should say, um, from Purdue University. They have 
an example of an actual paper that they've sort of really explained all the, the formatting. So I find that really useful, um, especially if your professor is a, a stickler for perfect APA. It's really good to be able to look at a document and see how it's, how it's done. So again, you can see we have lots of resources just for you to look at and, and um, be able to, to help you with doing the, your research uh, properly and presenting it properly. Great, and of course, help. <laughs> Always uh, good to have these uh, pointers. So on the main page, we've got a, a FAQ that we're trying to, to build more of. And then the library research help, we've got um, uh, a lot of videos there, um, kind of covering a lot of what I've covered tonight. And we also have uh, live help, which is a, a, a chat service that's uh, done usually during the, um, or during the day and during the evening, so some uh, Sunday hours as well, uh, where there's an actual librarian online. All the universities in Nova Scotia share that service, so, and we all have access to each other's databases. So you may be talking to a Dow librarian, or sometimes the Dow students are talking to a Mount librarian, but we can all kind of answer uh, sort of, um, questions about where to find things or, you know, help with where the APA guides, just to get you pointed in the, the right direction. Has anybody used that uh, chat service? <laughs> yeah, so even I'm just going to, we have it in a couple of different uh, places. I'm just going to quickly show you. So again, you can see them in the, um, the databases. We, we have it just at the, um, the side here that you can use it um, as well. Um, if I just quickly go to the home page, if you click on the Ask a Librarian Live Help, you can see that the, um, it's there as well. And um, again, in uh, NovaNet uh, Discovery, it's the Ask a Librarian that's down on the right-hand side. If you click on that, it pops up the little uh, chat box for you. So again, it's, again, um, like Joanna said, it's uh, sort of a quick, helpful way just to keep you on, on track. Great, so that was our whirlwind tour of uh, Mount Library Resources and Services in the online context. So when you're off campus at home, the, the sort of things that you can have access uh, to and of course, um, the librarians are always here. Um, you know, we love it when you drop in the library, but we are also available when you're off campus. So you know, whether you you can, um, you know, phone us. We've got a reference service from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., and we're available by email, by phone, or in person if you happen to be on campus for a class. So I, I hope this was uh, helpful for you. Um, just getting that sort of overview. Um, please know that we've got several other workshops uh, this uh, semester. I'm just going to. Uh